I'm definitely not alone when I say there is literally nothing more uncomfortable and awkward and frustrating than when you're working with a brand, everything is going super well, and then something happens that you're just like, oh God, this sucks. How do I handle this? Um, I don't want these these brands to not want to work with me anymore. This is uncomfortable. Like that feeling totally sucks. And there are five really, really common situations where I see this happening with creators that I work with time and time again. And today we're going to be talking about how you can actually get through all of those situations and potentially even make those situations like better, like make the outcome better than the, what they were even going to be before this all happened. I'm Kristen Buscan. I've been a full-time creator for over three years and I've brought in over $350,000 from sponsored posts and content creation collaborations with brands so far. Social Scoop is the podcast where we teach you, the entrepreneurial creator, to turn your online influence and creativity into a profitable, self-sustaining business. One thing that I want to preface this whole conversation with, there's going to be a lot of things that we talk about related to contract terms. I cannot stress enough as a creator how important it is for you to completely understand what is happening in your contracts. Because if you don't, that's going to be a really shitty situation when you end up getting screwed over, you're having trouble getting paid, you see your face on a billboard and you're making zero dollars for it. You don't want to get in any of these situations. So you need to make sure that what you're doing as a creator is prioritizing, understanding how to read contracts and figure out what is actually being said in these contracts. So we're just going to prime it with that. And we're going to run into the first little potentially awkward situation here, which is when you need to request a change in your contract terms. I think especially when you're working with a bigger brand that you're really excited about working with, you don't often remember that you are a 50-50 partner with this brand. The brand is hiring you as a service provider. You're not an employee. You are an independent contractor that is being hired by the brand to do a job, which means you have just as much right to say anything needs to be changed as the brand does. So when we're talking about a contract and you're getting this contract most of the time from a brand, especially again, if it's a larger company and you read it and find there are things that you're not comfortable with in there, you have to understand you have the right to be saying, hey, this needs to be changed. This is called redlining a contract. So what happens when you do get a contract and you're like, oh my God, I didn't agree to any of this. I don't know how to handle any of this. Um, so what I would say in this situation is you need to be able to go into that contract, find the terms that you're not comfortable with, simply redline them, which you can literally write on the contract these needs to be changed, these need to be changed. Or a lot of the times I think it's what's a lot easier is in an email response, I'll say to the brand, hey, I read this contract. Um, unfortunately in, you know, number 1A, 7B, 8C, whatever they're numbered as, I unfortunately am not able to agree to these. And I'll explain why. So for example, if it's exclusivity, if they want me to have six months of exclusivity and we never had a conversation about it before, I'm going to be messaging the brand saying, hey, you know, in this clause, you're asking for full exclusivity for six months. Unfortunately, that's not something I'm able to offer for free. However, here are some options. Um, option A is we can completely remove this if you don't want to pay for it. Let's completely remove it. Option B is maybe we keep this in here, but here's my rate for one month you, or exclusivity, three months exclusivity, and six months exclusivity. You let me know which rate you're comfortable with, and then we can change the contract to reflect that. There's literally nothing wrong with you saying that. And I think it's scary because the like gut reaction is, I'm just not going to say anything because I don't want to piss this brand off and make them like ditch the whole partnership and like ditch me on the side of the road. Like most of the time, that's not what's going to happen. If in some situations, this will happen where maybe you say to this brand, here's what I can do for the exclusivity. And they say, sorry, we can't change this. It has to be six months and we don't have a budget to pay for it. At that point, you really have to ask yourself, am I okay doing that for free? 
And I'll be honest, I think your answer should be no, mostly because if a brand later on were a competitor that you also like were to come to you and ask you to, you know, do X, Y, and Z for $10,000 and you had this measly $1,000 partnership that you signed away six months exclusivity on, you're missing out on $10,000 and you made $0 from that exclusivity. That's why it's so important for you to be paid for things like that. And you know, there are plenty of terms in your contract, like usage rights and things like that, where you can get into situations like that, but you have to understand you have just as much right. And it is so okay for you as a service provider, as a business to say, Hey, I need to review these contract terms with you and make changes. Brands, expect that. If they're working with legitimate creators who are doing this for their job, they're going to expect that they have to make changes in these contracts to reach a, a an agreement, right? Like this is a partnership, right? What you should not do in this situation is say, oh my gosh, this contract sucks. You know, like I want a million changes and I'm only going to you know, sign this contract if you make all the changes exactly how I want. You also have to remember that this is a partnership and you could definitely have to come to a compromise with their terms as well. Maybe they can only pay for three months exclusivity, but they really, really need six. You can say, all right, well, you know, they came my way a little bit. Let me come their way a little bit and meet somewhere in the middle. You also potentially are going to have to be willing to compromise as well. So keep that in mind. It's not a one-way street you have to also weigh their needs and then ask yourself, you know, is it actually worth it? Is what they're asking me for actually worth it? Now, this is a hard conversation to have with brands. And I've had conversations with so many creators who have had this happen to them. And they're like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I don't know what to do. What do you do when you're in a partnership with a brand, you post the content and it absolutely bombs. I mean, like worst performance ever. You were like, I cannot even believe that it performed this horribly. That is so awkward and uncomfortable for you, right? Like we've all been in that situation. Now, there are some things that we can do in this situation to make it better, but there are also some things in this situation we should never do. First thing we should never do is when we're in our contract, agreeing to a make good post, which is basically where if the content doesn't perform to a certain standard that would be specified in the contract, then you have to create more content for free. We're just not doing that. Like our content that we create, we're doing the best that we can. We're checking all the boxes for this piece of content to perform well. If it doesn't, there's a certain aspect, a certain percentage of that that's simply in the hands of whatever app we're posting on. So we did our job. There's no reason we should be posting again for free, in my opinion. Now, maybe you want to add like a couple stories on to kind of make up for it. I'm fine with that, but redoing the content completely is just not okay. We're not doing that. We're not working for free. Now, what you should do in this situation is not act like it didn't happen. You have to confront the issue head on. And yes, it's uncomfortable, but it's going to be so much more uncomfortable later when the brand just doesn't rehire you and never wants to work with you again. <laughs> so what we're going to do in this situation instead is face the problem. We're going to reach out to the brand and say, Hey, I shared my content. Um, you know, I was super excited about it. It wasn't as well received by my audience as I was expecting it to be. So here are some options that I want to offer you because I want you to know that I would really like to, you know, get the results that we were looking to get. So the options that I would personally offer, and this is actually something I learned from Magda Huala, who is head of marketing at Aspire. Um, she said that in this situation, what she loves for creators to do is actually offer free usage rights for a certain amount of time. That way the brand can really decide, are we really upset with the results here enough that we want to just continue to push this out and we'll use our own money to do it? That's their decision. So you could realistically say, I'd like to offer you 30 days paid usage for free if you'd like to boost this out to you know an additional audience. Happy to offer that for free. And I think that's a really nice compromise. 
Um, the other thing that I might do is actually offer them like, again, extra story slides or to share it to maybe a different platform. Because for me, TikTok is like very secondary. Sometimes what I'll do is say, hey, you know, I'm not really happy with the performance of this post to be transparent with you. I'm actually going to share it on TikTok for free just to see how it performs over there. And you're kind of, again, offering them a little something extra for free. Maybe you're going to add a little story push on with that. But that really shows the brand that you're willing to do something to make it better, right? Like you're, you're actually trying to be a partner here and get them the most bang for their buck. So I think they'll be very appreciative of that. Um, and again, it's much better than just kind of skirting around the problem and acting like it didn't happen. That's not going to get you anywhere. Oof. The third hard conversation that I see a lot of creators have is when there is an issue with creative control. Sometimes we have a brand who gives us a brief with a script and everything is exact on how they want it. And you're looking at it after you've already signed a contract and you're going, absolutely not. My audience is going to see this piece of content and go, no. <laughs> So here's the reason why it's so important for you to stick up for yourself in this situation and actually say something. Do not, if you know that post is not going to perform well, if you do it exactly how they asked you to, don't just do it. Because then what's going to happen is you're going to be back in situation number two, where the post performed really horribly and everyone hated it and the brand's going to be upset. We don't even want them to get to that point. Instead, what we're going to do is in the beginning, we're going to say, thank you so much for sending over this brief. I really like this idea. However, I just don't know that this is going to resonate with my audience. I'm not confident that my audience is going to give us what we're looking for from this partnership based off of this script. Here's what I would suggest instead. And I would take their talking points and take their concept and kind of mash it up with yours in a way that checks all of their boxes, but also is more confident in your lane that it's going to actually resonate with your audience. And honestly, I've never met a brand when I've been in this situation who has been upset with me for saying that. If anything, they're excited because they're like, oh, well, thanks for speaking up. Like we didn't want to spend all of this money in this, you know, partnership and not get the results that we're looking for. If you know that this isn't going to work, yeah, thanks for telling us, right? Like this is good information for them to have. Um, this is something I would absolutely speak up about. Um, and the other kind of like secondary part of this issue is when brands are potentially asking for uh, reshoots with creative control. So like if you have a brand where they give you creative control and they have just like, here are some talking points, you know, they're not very specific. And then they come back at you and say, mm, actually, you know, we didn't really like your idea. But you've already created all of the content and you're pissed now, right? Like that sucks to have to redo content. No one wants to do that. Um, I'll tell you a quick story about when this happened to me. This was one of the most horrible brand deal stories I could possibly have to tell you. It was traumatizing. I was working with a brand where I had to use a bubble machine, <laughs> okay? It created giant foam pit for your backyard. So they sent me all of these like blow up pool toys. Um, they wanted me and my husband, they wanted my dogs in it. Again, I had to literally make my entire backyard into a giant foam pit. This production took so long. This was like the most high production thing I've ever done. It was hours and hours of work. Of course, we're like self shooting it with our you know, remote, uh, on the camera. It was a nightmare. Honestly, I've never had a situation where I've been shooting and I actually got so mad. I like chucked my phone. That was the time when that happened. Needless to say, this was a traumatizing experience. Um, and so I followed the brief exactly. Okay. Exactly. Every talking point, everything they needed me to have in the photos. I did. I send them the content and they say, oh, you know, we love the content so much. However, we've actually decided to change a lot of the talking points in the content. And I said, don't care. Not my problem. <laughs> I followed the brief that you gave me. And so this was a really sticky situation because the brand wanted me to reshoot the content for free, which I was absolutely not about to do, especially considering how traumatizing this experience to shoot it was. And I sent them an email saying exactly that. I said, you know, you guys gave me the brief. I already shot it. I'm, I can't reshoot this for free. But here are my rates for reshooting. 
Now, transparently, this is when I was first getting started. So I actually didn't have any sort of reshoot clause in my contract. And this was like one of those experiences that made me say, I'll never not have one in my contract anymore. Um, Personally, now what I do with reshoots and edits is I'll have uh, no reshoots included for free, but I will specify a rate for a reshoot. And it's typically a percentage of what they originally pay. Um, But I will allow two edits, which is I'm not reshooting content. I'm just maybe changing things around in the video, changing text, whatever. That's fine. Um, So in this situation, I didn't have any sort of contract uh, term laid out for this contract clause laid out for this. And so they were like, we don't technically have to pay you to reshoot this. And I said, dang, they're kind of right. But they also don't have to do it because there's no clause in the contract that says I have to reshoot it. So we're kind of like at this weird standstill. And I ended up saying to them, I'll reshoot it for this much money. It was a maybe a third or quarter of what they had originally paid me um, simply because I just wanted to get this over with. I was over it. I was done. I already hated it. I knew I never wanted to work with them again. Um, And so I just took the L and I reshot it. Everyone was happy at the end. We have never once had a conversation since. (laughs) So this is why it's so important to just be upfront about these things, like having that reshoot clause in your contract, having edits laid out in your contract. What are you going to be okay with? Uh, And then being very upfront about creative control. You know, what is the brief? Are they going to be very specific? If they're not specific, you're sending over your idea and saying, here's exactly what it's going to look like so that everyone is on the same page before you shoot anything, because then there's no miscommunication. There's no, nothing is up in the air and everyone knows exactly what's going to come out of this piece of content that you're shooting. We don't even want to get into any sort of confusion with the brand. The next thing that I see happen very often to a lot of creators is not getting paid on time. Delayed payments have to be one of the most annoying parts about being a creator. Most of the time, our partnerships aren't being paid out for 30, 60, sometimes 90 days. That is absolutely insane. I don't know any other industry where you have to wait 90 days to get paid, but this happens so frequently for us as creators. So there's kind of two parts about what I want to talk about today. You should definitely not be in your contracts allowing for a 90-day payment. If you're looking at a contract and it says net 90, which means, again, you'll be paid in 90 days, you have to negotiate that to at max 60 net 60. Um, Most payments, I always try and get down to net 30. And that feels much more acceptable than net 60 or net 90. However, the other part of this is they don't necessarily have to pay you by when they say they're going to pay you, right? This is where it gets tricky. They're supposed to, but a lot of brands just don't. And then you're in this awkward situation of trying to track down the brand, trying to get them to pay the money that they owe you. I've had plenty of friends. Thankfully, I've never been in this situation. I've had so many friends who have had to take it to collections and let collections try and get money from the companies. I mean, some brands simply overshoot with the amount of money they're able to pay, and then they literally cannot pay people. Okay. This is a really shitty situation for you to get in, obviously. Um, But how are you going to handle this situation is the question. Now, I always will give people the benefit of the doubt. Maybe like someone switched positions and your payment got like lost in the mix. Like we never know what happened inside the company to get to this point where they're not paying you. However, they only get a little bit of leeway right? So what I might do in this situation is I would send the brand an email a couple days after the payment is due, like maybe three to five days after the payment is due. Because again, maybe a couple days late, it's fine. I can deal with it. However, if we are three to five business days out of when your payment was supposed to be into your account and you haven't received it yet, that's when you're going to receive the first email from me that says, hi, Hope you're doing well. I realized that my payment has still not been paid out. It was due on this date. Can you just provide me with an update? Thank you so much. Super nice, super chill. Like, I'm not threatening them. I'm not upset yet. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. They don't respond. Cool. If they do respond and they say, awesome, you know, so sorry, it's on the way. Here's the information. We've already sent it. Here's the screenshot. Cool. I'm not mad. 
It's fine. It's fine. However, they don't respond. This is when I start to get a little pissed off, okay? Because at this point, I feel like they're kind of just dicking me around. So then I send another email. Hey, just following up on this. Um, Again, now we're this many days late. Uh, You know, we're going to need to get this wrapped up uh, by this date. And I'm giving them a deadline at this point of when I'm expecting the payment in my bank account. And if it's not, then you're going to get real mad, Kristen. Okay. Uh, They don't respond to this email. Then I'm going on to my third email, which is me saying, uh, I will be sending this to collections uh, on this day. Maybe I give them another couple days. Maybe they didn't see my emails. Who knows? I'm going to give them another couple days. And I'm saying, I am sending this to collections on this day. If you, If I don't get an update by then, collections will handle it. Thank you so much. Goodbye. And collections is cool because collections, it, they will hustle. Like collections literally only gets paid when you get paid. So you better believe that they're going to be hounding these people for your payment so that they can get their check. I respect it. I'm fine with it. If I have to give someone a little percentage of my paycheck to do all of that annoying the brand for me, because clearly me annoying them didn't get me anywhere. I'm fine with it. That's cool for me. So collections, life hack. I feel like we love collections. Now, outside of this, there is definitely one way that you can get a little bit rewarded for this, and that's by adding a late payment fee into your contract. Um, I've seen so many different kind of formats of how people do this, but when I have a late payment fee in my agreement, um, it's typically a certain amount of dollars per every day that they are late on the payment. Um, And this will literally continue to add up until they pay me. So even if collections is coming at them saying, this is how much you owe, it's going to be like plus this much for the late fee. And then a couple of weeks later, it's going to be like plus this much for the late fee. So I'm still coming for that late fee, whether it's me tracking you down or collections just tracking you down. Okay. And again, collections is fine with it. They're they're making more money every single day uh, that this brand decides not to pay you. So that's definitely something that I would consider adding in there because I think once you do add a late payment fee, they're like, oh shit, this person means business. Um, But also, let's just pay her so that we don't have to continue to add on to our invoice. The last tough situation I want to talk about today is when you have short deadlines. How many times have you ever had a brand reach out to you and say, oh my gosh, we want to hire you. We love your work. Uh, We have this campaign that we're running. Content will actually be due in three days. Okay. First of all, no. Um, I have a life Three days is not even enough for me to like get my thoughts together to figure out what I want this piece of content to look like. If they want quality content from me, they're going to need to give me a few days. Industry standard is two weeks turnaround time. So that's my kind of, so that's always my starting point. If I have a brand that's asking me for turnaround that's any less than two weeks, my response is, absolutely, here's my rush fee that we'll be adding on to this price. And that might be 20%. If I'm being paid $1,000, I will now be getting paid $1,200 because I'm going to get 20% of my fee simply because you're asking me to do it in less than two weeks time. Now, I have some brands where I'm okay with doing less than two weeks. This might be a brand that like, I work with super, super frequently, and I know they rehire me time and time again, and the video is going to be like super easy for me to make. Like That, okay, different story in my opinion, and I'm very choosy on the brands that I allow to do that. But for the most part, if a brand is asking me to create a piece of content for a partnership in less than two weeks turnaround time, I am adding on a rush fee. If they don't agree to this, that's fine, but they'll get my content in two weeks, period. If you ever find yourself in this situation, you're getting a lot of pushback from the brands, you can literally explain to them why this is something that you're not able to do. Especially a lot of creators also have nine to five jobs where you know, they get out of work and it's already like the end of day one. They only have two more days to create it. And they like just read the email that says it needs to be done in a couple of days. Like, I think if you give brands a good explanation or realistic explanation of why you're not able to do it in that turnaround, 
I think most brands really are understanding. Sometimes I think as creators, we think that the brands are like, just like out to get us with certain things. And I really, truly try not to think like that because I think so many brands really are willing to work with us if we are honest and transparent with them. I, anytime I have something float around in the, in the back of my mind where I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel right, or I really need this from them, or like, I can't do what they're asking me, I will always be upfront with them about it because it's so much worse later on if I'm not. That is like my general rule of thumb. Obviously, these situations can feel so, so, so uncomfortable. I get it. I feel you. I hope that us talking through all of these situations makes you feel a little bit more comfortable going into them. The biggest takeaway that I hope you get from all of this is that you are a 50-50 partner with the brand. If you have any issues that are things that you don't feel comfortable with, you have to change your mindset and realize you have just as much right to ask for things in a partnership as they do. You are a 50-50 partner. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You can check out Social Scoop on all of your favorite platforms now on YouTube as well. Very exciting. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.